Hello and welcome back to another interview at the Jitex Global Dubai 2024. I'm Adel, the host, and today we have a special guest with us who is also a friend of mine, Alexander Rinkler, Senior Commercial Manager at Aspire UAE. Alexander, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? Very well, thank you. It's been a tiring and intense week, and <laughs> we're just about surviving. So um, tell us what's your story and what's what's the story behind Aspire here exhibiting at the Jitex Global? So Aspire is the uh, business development arm of ATRC, right? right. What we are responsible for, I mean, business development is one way to put it, but we're responsible for grant funding, business development, and grand challenges that come out of finding problems that exist in the world of today, mm. and then finding solutions either by funding research or by creating something called a grand challenge. Right. And that leads us to actually what you see behind you right now, which is the EAV24 or the main vehicle of the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League. Mm. And this right here is a fully self-learning, and self-driving racing machine. And the objective of this racing series is to bring coders from around the world who are experts in their field of robotics, uh, autonomous mobility, and artificial intelligence to prove which one of them has the best code and which one of them can measure risk versus reward on the track. We're actually the first autonomous racing series that's been able to achieve multi-agent racing on one racetrack, which goes beyond two cars. The first year, which was this year, actually, in April 27th uh, of 2024, we had four autonomous race cars on the track at Yas Marina for the first time ever. Wow, so this is really interesting. It's fully autonomous. It doesn't need a driver. And ha have there been any accidents, incidents, any crashes uh, with, the, with the fully autonomous cars? I mean, during the race, you actually saw a spin of one of the leading cars, which lost them the race, mm. right? So it was quite close to what would happen in real life. You misjudge the tire temperature, you misjudge the brake temperature, Correct. and then you make a mistake and you spin, right? Mm. So it's quite close to what can happen in real life. During the testing phase, there were obviously accidents, um, but they were quite minor. The thing is, we gave the teams very little time to develop their code on a platform that is extremely challenging, right? What you see behind you is based on the Super Formula 23 car, which is a um, Japanese racing series. Uh, the cars themselves are a little faster than F2, and you know they have significant challenges. I mean, one obviously being the speed, but the other one being the vibrations. Now, the sensor technology that's exerted to those vibrations and also to the temperature mm. has to work extremely hard to stay functional. Right. Sometimes the sensors failed, and then there was an accident. Or right. sometimes some of the mechanics had failed. I mean, at motorsport at the end of the day, it's constant research and development, and that's why it happens on a racetrack, right? right? And we're using that concept to further the development of sensor technology. And crashes in one way, first of all, not, they're not being a human in the car, is an advantage. But secondly, all the data that we're able to capture from this, we're able to learn for from, mm. sorry, able to learn from and compound onto improving not only the software, but also the hardware that comes along in autonomous road cars. So how is it that um, uh, you're monetizing, the, the, the UAE government's monetizing through this technology? Because I'm assuming they're not selling these cars. Is that correct? Or they are? That's correct. These cars are not for sale. Right. right? Um, monetization at this stage isn't the primary objective. Okay. It is more the research and development right. and finding solutions uh, that we can apply to improve road safety. Right. At the end of the day, there's also an incentive for our partners and businesses that work together with A2RL and Aspire to work more closely with the UAE, attract talent to the UAE because you know it is seen as a country that fosters development in new technology and wants to position us as, let's say, a leader in global autonomous mobility. Got it. Fantastic. Wow. I, I wondered, um, with all this research and technology uh, being being extracted from you know lessons learned from car crashes, whatever, I wondered if there's any use case for storing this information on a blockchain, uh, if this is something that the UAE is considering, because we just had the Future of Blockchain Summit. It's mm -hmm. also one of the key big um, you know events of Dubai. It had its own, its own like name and event, Future of Blockchain Summit. I wondered if um, the UAE government is using any of that technology to its advantage? Within the HRL program, as of now, we are not integrating blockchain technology, but it is tech, you know, right. that's definitely here to stay. Right. And in terms of immutability and security of right. data, 
it's definitely an approach that we should consider and that we are considering in the future. Mm. The thing is, with the data you know, being compiled lap after lap with these cars, the more races we do and the more laps we consecutively do, the more data we'll have to process. True. And the best place to store large amounts of data in a safe way is obviously blockchain. Blockchain. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm glad that you're considering it and you know about it. You know the immutability behind it. So that's good. You have that in place. Um, the education value is definitely there. I, I really hope to see um, some. I, I want to see this, some, some more shows that are going to take place. Are there any upcoming shows of the autonomous vehicles, races, things like that? Yes, there are. So um, November 9th and November 10th of uh, this year, we're going to be taking our autonomous race car to Japan. Wow. And we will do a demo uh, together with the Super Formula Final, which will be taking place at Suzuka Circuit, right? Wow. 9th and 10th of November. Wow. On the 9th, we'll be doing hot laps, autonomous hot laps around the racetrack. And on the 10th, we will put a human driver against the machine, or the AI, on the same racetrack to see which wins. Amazing. So I can't, I'm going to save those dates right away. And uh, even if I can't be there physically, I hope to catch it live. Absolutely. Oh, right. And obviously our next race, so season two, which is basically the reason why we're here. We're announcing season two of A2RL. Right. Is uh, April 26th of next year. Next we'll be year. racing at Yas Marina Circuit. We'll have all the teams plus four more that will be attending the race and then we'll compete to who has the best autonomous software. And for those watching right now, the audience, if they're interested in finding out more information about Aspire, what's the best place for them to, to find out more information? Obviously go to our website, a2rl.io, or follow us on social media at Autonomous Racing League. You'll find us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch. And Twitch, even and better, Twitch. wow. Alexander, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, very insightful. Thank you for yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this insightful. We'll leave all the links in the description so you can check out Alexander's profile as well as Aspire. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. See you. Let's go.